Today we're going to talk about how to configure a 2080 IF2 or 2080 IF4 plug-in module for the Micro 800 PLC. Two big obstacles we're going to get through in this video is how do we wire it and how do we scale it. The problem you're going to run into is this is your typical wiring example. In fact, this is the wiring example for the 2080 IF4. And the IF2 is similar. And we're showing a current transmitter here. And we're just showing the two points that it goes to on the module. This is not enough to get a 4 to 20 milliamp circuit working. And the biggest thing that is missing in this sample diagram and many sample diagrams is some type of power supply. And here's where we get into, is it a two-wire device or a four-wire device? So really quick rule, because I have a playlist I'm going to put the end of this that really gets into the weeds of it. If you don't see a power supply anywhere in your setup, then you need a four-wire device or you need to add an external power supply. In this case, here are those two connection points that it has. And for us to easily make this work, we're going to need a four-wire device. And I'm going to use the SIM ALP2 for this because if we power it up, we can simulate a current two-wire, a current source, or a voltage source. So we're going to start with a current source. And if I select current source, at the bottom, it's going to give me the terminal assignments. So my red post is going to be my PLC input. And my common is going to be my black post. From our wiring diagram, the IF4 will be using terminals 4 and 6. And with the IF2, your common is the back left terminal. And then CI-0 is going to be your current input number 0. So I'm going to take current input number 0 to the red post. And then the COM to the black post. And now, as I bring my value up on the analog simulator, we're getting a milliamp signal on our touchscreen. Now, we're going to talk through how I'm doing the scaling in just a second, but let's talk about the two wire device because this is more commonly what I see you do is you have some type of two wire sensor. So I can simulate a two wire sensor and we bring it up and Really, we're not getting anything on it. Over here on this yellow banner, it now says open wire. And what that means is, for some reason, it cannot push current through the circuit, which, one, can be simply an open wire. And honestly, on an existing system, that usually is what it is. Blown fuse, corroded terminals, bad PLC input, or there's no power supply. And if we have no voltage, we can have no current. So in this case, we need to add a power supply to this. And if we look here at the bottom, it is telling us the red is still our PLC input, but now our black terminal needs to be going to an external power supply positive. So here's a wire from the positive of our 24 volt power supply. Now to hook this up, I do have to take the minus off. Otherwise, yeah, we are going to have a dead short. And now we can take the common wire back off. So you'll only actually have one wire connected here. That'll be our PLC input. And then it's actually getting a common through the power of the PLC. So we're taking plus 24 volt from our external power supply, going to our black terminal, and coming from our black terminal to our PLC input, and then through the PLC's power, it's going back to the minus. Now it says 5.3 milliamp here and 5.3 milliamp here. Now let's talk about how to add our plug-in module to our Connected Components Workbench program and do some scaling. Now I've already created a basic program because we've done that plenty of times and there's a whole course down in the description to help you out with Connected Components Workbench. We're gonna double click on the Micro 850 in the left pane and down in the plug-in modules, I have that IF2 in the first module. We're gonna right click it it is an analog module, and it is a 2080 IF2. And then right here, we can select the type. So in this case, we do want a current, and it is enabled. And just in case we want to play with it later, we can set this one up for voltage. Now, typically, you wouldn't. They would be the same thing. But just in case we want to play in a later video, I'm going to do that. And that's all there is to it. 
So now let's go ahead and download this program. And while you're waiting on this program to download, it's a great time to hit that subscribe button. Makes me really feel happy when I see that subscribe count jump up in a video. Now let's open up our global variables and go find that tag. Now our physical IO tags are gonna start with underscore IO and then EM is gonna be for the embedded module. And if we go a little further down, then we're gonna see P1, that is plugin module number one. We have AI for analog input, and then zero is channel zero, one is channel one. And we have a value on our analog input. I'm gonna bring the value down to four milliamp. And now we have a value of 13,126. And if I bring it up to 20, then I have a value of 65,520. And here's where I see all types of crazy scaling done, trying to make the numbers work out. But these numbers have some rhyme or reason to them. And let's go and look in the manual and see if we can understand what we're looking for. Here's the input specifications for the 2080 IF2 and 2080 IF4. And right down here is that data range. And if you notice, this is really close to what we saw at 20 milliamps, 65, 535. In fact, this is kind of a number that you should probably jog to memory. You're going to see it a lot. So this is the range that we're going to see in our PLC program. But now we need to know what the range is that it would be out in the field. And this is what trips a lot of people up is a lot of you probably even now are thinking it would be four to 20 milliamp. But right here, here's the analog normal operating range. And the normal operating range, and that doesn't mean the range that we typically see or our sensor would be, this is just the range of the analog input is zero to 20 milliamp. You need to look at this at every module because a lot of times this will be like zero to 21 milliamp. But now we're gonna use a scale instruction. We're gonna take these numbers, and we're going to turn them into these numbers. Let me go back over to Connected Components Workbench, and let's double click on Prog 1, and let's bring down an instruction block. And I'm going to do this a little bit the wrong way because this is what you ask me questions about is we're going to double click on the instruction block, and we're going to type SC, and we're going to have an SCL instruction. Double click on it. And notice how this is truncated. Like I can't see what these in raw, well, I can see in raw, but in raw, whatever this thing is. By default, these instructions are too narrow. Here's how you fix that is right click any of the white space where you don't have anything and go to properties. And then down here, I'm just going to change this four to a five. And that's going to make it where we can read these now. Now, a lot of you want to go right here and put that analog input in, which we just figured out was IOP1AI00. And the moment we do, we get a little triangle down here. And if we mouse over it, it says mismatch between data types. And if you mouse over the actual instruction, it tells us down here we need a real number. But this analog input is a UN or an unsigned integer. So we need to convert this to a real number first. And this is something CCW does an excellent job at. We're gonna bring another instruction block in front of it, and we're gonna double click on it and start typing any. And these are the any two instructions. This will take any data and convert it to any other type of data. And we wanted any two real instruction. And now we're gonna take that and make it our analog input. And then we need to create a tag for it to go into. Now, we haven't talked a lot about this, but if you click on the top part of this, then you're going to get a drop down here with all your existing tags. If you actually double click on the bottom part of the block, then you're ready to create a new tag. And I'm going to create one called Real Raw. And then I'm going to take that Real Raw and we're going to put it right here. And there we go. Now our error is gone. And so for our enroll max, I'm gonna create tags actually for enroll max, enroll min, and in EU min. So just double click on them. Enroll max, and then enroll min. And notice as I'm doing this, this way, it knows what data type to put here. I didn't have to put real, it knew exactly what to do. And then I'm gonna put it into an output here. Now I've already created this one. 
it's called analog scale and it's what I'm actually showing over here on my HMI, but you could just double click down here and it would have filled it in as a real number. And let's go ahead and download this and then we can play with our set point numbers and talk about how we could do different scaling. Okay, we have a raw value of nearly 65,536, so really close. But right now we have zeros on all these, so let's fill these in. And we're going to do that based on what we found over here. And our data range, which is our raw range, is 0 to 65,535. And our engineering unit range, or what we want out of it, is 0 to 20 milliamp. So I'm going to double click on the raw max. And we will make it 65535. And then right below it here is the EU Mac. We're going to make it 20. And when we do that, now we're showing an analog value of 19.99573, which is pretty close to 20 milliamp. And as we bring it down, it's going to go down. And if we bring it all the way to 4 milliamp, then it should match up all the way. Now, there's a lot you can do from this point as far as learning about analog. And this is an excellent playlist to help you start understanding how to make decisions based on analog values.